I think I'll close with an illustration. It's about myself, if you don't mind, and it's been in one or two magazines, which I hope you haven't read. When I entered the Christian ministry at the age of 25, I determined I would be the most Methodist Baptist in history. Oh, talk about Methodicity. Talk about perfectionism. Talk about making plans. I used to plan out the next day, you know, from uh, rise at six in the morning. Uh, Twenty minutes to dress and wash. and uh, So much time for prayer. So much time for Bible study. So much time for answering letters. So much time uh, for visiting. So much time for exercise. Did you ever come across that text in the book of Judges? The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. Well, let me read you the devised version. The powers of evil in their wretched courses fought against poor Sidlow. It seemed as though they had a fanatical passion to smash my plans to smithereens. And again and again I would come to the end of the day feeling defeated and wretched. And as I got absorbed in the busy enmeshments of the pastorate, I found more and more that system was a problem. And I found that uh, regular prayer was being nudged out. And uh, even my time for Bible study was again and again encroached upon. And I'm sorry to have to report that traveling alongside with that, there developed a feeling that I could get on without regular prayer. And then the desire for it began to ebb away. Mind you, I was disturbed because deep, deep down I knew, Sid, no ministry of the word can be powerful unless it is a prayerful ministry. But I kept managing without regular prayer, and for a time things seemed to go on all right. But uh, eventually there came a crisis. One morning, I looked at my watch, and according to my plan, for I was still struggling to keep some semblance of uh, methodicity on the go, according to my plan, I was due for an hour's prayer. So I said, come on, Sid. But just as I was about to go, a kind of velvety little voice somewhere inside me said, Sid, wait. You know you shouldn't be spending that hour in prayer. Look at that pile of letters on the desk, unanswered. The really Christian thing, the practical thing, is answer those letters. So I thought, which shall I do? Shall I go for prayer? Shall I answer the letters? As we say in Scotland, that's where we are from, you know. I swithered. Did you ever hear that word? Oh, it's a wonderful word, that. I swithered. That is, I vacillated. Oh, that's not much better, is it? Uh, shall I, shan't I? Shall I, shan't I? And while I was swithering, that little voice spoke again. And it said, Oh, Sid, Sid, you are ridiculous. And you keep flogging yourself on this matter of prayer. Give over. Give over. Why? You're converted. You're born again. God has called you into the ministry. People are getting converted. And the auxiliaries are flourishing. And people are coming in to the church. And uh, you've got no, no cause to worry. It's quite plain that God's blessing you. And besides, uh, uh, God doesn't want just a lot of mystics. He needs the Marthas as well as the Marys. You get on with the practical things and uh, God will see to all the others. 
But you know, sometimes, friends, the enemy oversteps himself. And he did that morning. Because that velvety little voice from somewhere said, And in any case, said, Why don't you face up to it and live with it? You are not one of the spiritual kind. Ooh. I don't want to use exaggerative terminology, but if you'd stuck a knife into my bosom, I don't think it could have hurt more. You are not one of the spiritual kind. Now, I'm not of an introspective nature, but that morning I took a careful look at the interior of James Sidlow Baxter. And I'll tell you what I found. There was indeed a part of me that didn't want to pray. It was the part that we call the emotions. I wasn't in the mood for it. And I didn't want to go and pray. I wanted to do the practical thing. But I also found that my emotions were naughty little hypocrites. Really, they were just hiding under the pretext of those unanswered letters to stop me from going to pray. The letters were just uh, an excuse. And as I looked more penetratively, I found there was another part of me that did want to pray. It's the part that we call the will. Yes, the will to pray was there. But the mood, the desire, the emotion for it wasn't. And uh, suddenly I, I, I turned on my will and I said, Will, are you ready to go and pray? And Will said, Here am I. I'm willing. So I said, come on, Will. And I linked my arm through that of Will, and the two of us set off to go for our time of prayer. But the minute we took the first step, all the emotions sprang up and said, we're not coming, we're not coming, we're not coming, we're not coming. And I saw Will stagger just for a moment, and I said, Will, can you stick it? And Will said, yes, Sid, if you can. So Will and I, we went for our time of prayer. Now, if you had asked me at the end of that hour, have you had a good time? Oh, I would have had to wring my hands and say, a good time, it's been a fight all the way through. Heaven seemed like brass, and God seemed millions of miles away, and the Lord seemed unconcerned, and prayer seemed a mockery. You see, all over the place we find Christians, they think if they don't have a good time emotionally, that their prayer hasn't uh, been effective. We are all needing to learn that the validity of prayer does not depend upon the emotional condition of the one who prays. I may be, uh, uh, I may be uh, equatorially hot or antarctically cold emotionally, but whether I'm tropic or frigid does not affect the validity of prayer in the name of Jesus. And if you'd asked me, have you, have you had a good time, meaning emotionally, I would have had to say the very opposite. But we, 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 we stuck it. And you know, that went on for about two weeks. And if you had asked me at the end of that two weeks, after that hour's prayer every day, I would have had to say, no, I'm afraid it's been a, a disappointing experience. But after about two weeks, one morning when Will and I were going for prayer, I, I happened to hear one of my leading emotions say to the others, come on you guys, they'll go whether we object or not. Now that morning, I can't say that the emotions were cooperative, but at any rate, they were quiescent. And uh, Will and I were able to get on with praying undistractedly. It was very much better than it was at first. Why, when I first started, in the middle of a most important prayer, I'd find one of the emotions had run off to the golf course and was playing golf, and I had to go and say, Come back! <laughs> you see. <laughs> but now I began to find, instead of being obstreperous, they were negatively agreeable. You know, that went on for about two weeks, and if you'd said, are you having an emotionally good time? I would have had to say, oh, no, 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 it's more like the Sahara Desert. But you know, after about another two weeks, one morning when Will and I were praying, when we were no more thinking about the emotions than the man in the moon, 
Suddenly, one of my best-known emotions jumped up and shouted, Hallelujah! And all the other emotions said, Amen! <laughs> and for the first time in my spiritual history, the whole of Sidlow Baxter, mind and reason and conscience and volition and feeling and emotion were all coordinated in one concentrated experience of prayer. And God was real and heaven was open and the Lord was there and the Holy Spirit was moving through my mind and will and emotions. Are you tumbling to it? Look, I want, I want uh, those of us who are here today, whoever we are, wherever we live, however young or old we are, let this meeting today be the time when you decide whatever I may have been up till now, from this day forward I will be a praying Christian. I believe if we could get the praying minority to its knees, we could determine the destiny of Canada and USA. I do. I wouldn't dare to say it if I didn't believe it. If we could get the evangelicals down to a prosecuting of prayer, I believe God is waiting to send revival. However, what I'm concerned about is you and I as individuals. And if I've gone a bit long this afternoon, I'm sorry. <laughs>